What's up guys, it's your boy DS and today we're going to be talking about my Undead Army Necromancer build. Now I've been using this build for quite a while and I am actually loving this. This is going to be really good whenever it comes to mobs. It's really good whenever you're fighting elites or if you're fighting bosses or whatever the case may be. I've been having tons of fun with this build. As you guys see, I am world tier 3. So um, I did do the capstone dungeon with this build also. Uh, with that being the case, I wanted to go over everything so you guys can see exactly how it plays and everything like that. Now on top of that, uh, I do have like a really cool combo for you guys to... Uh, use with this build as well if you guys want to do that uh you obviously can tweak it to whatever you want choices up to you but now that we're done talking about all that i do want to get into the build so you guys can see exactly how everything works so starting out we're gonna go ahead and get into the skills and let me go all the way to the top uh so the skill tree the first thing you want is hemorrhage because uh number one this is going to give you essence back what you really want for this build and then on top of that you will be you know spawning blood orbs which will give you hp uh, or 15% of your maximum life when picked up. There you guys go. But then with the upgrades, number one, uh, whenever you pick up a blood orb, hemorrhage will now do an AOE around your target and grant you two additional essence, which gives you 10 essence per auto attack, which is really good. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on. The next one I want to talk about is this one right here. Hemorrhage grants 1.6% base life as fortify each time it hits an enemy and has a 1.5% chance per enemy hit to fortify you for 100% base life. This is just going to give you some damage reduction, which is going to be really good. It's going to keep your character tanky, and it's giving you so much survivability with the healing and the damage reduction that you should be staying alive uh, throughout whatever you are doing. Now that we're done talking about that, let's go ahead and get into the next area, which for the core skills, the only thing you're going to be getting is going to be this right here. Uh, your damage has up to a 12% chance to create a corpse at the target's location. This is really good because basically whenever you're doing damage, you can now create a corpse without any enemies dying. This is going to be very good when it comes to those really strong elites or any bosses that you're fighting. You're able to create corpses and do whatever you need to do with those corpses because uh, if you guys don't have any mobs or small enemies around that you can kill, Kill, getting corpses is not going to be as easy so this is just another way for you to do it which is going to be really nice um i have two points in here but this is for my for my gear so you don't need any points in anything else besides this right here moving on to the next uh area i want to talk about corpse explosion this is going to be uh one of the best pieces uh to the build now, whenever you explode a corpse, it just explodes, does damage, but that's not what we're going to be using it for. This right here increases the radius, but we're mainly using it for this. Uh, instead of it just being an explosion, it now becomes a miasma that sits on the ground and does keeps doing damage uh, over time. And this is going to be really good because we're going, you know, whenever you put this down on top of a boss or an elite or whatever, uh, they're going to just sit there and take damage. Now, obviously, I'm not saying they're going to literally sit there forever, but the, whenever they're in there, it's a really great way to get some damage off, and it's only 6 seconds, so it's not like you need them to sit there for 10, 15, 20 seconds. You're just going to get that 6-second burst window off with, with them sitting there really good, especially whenever you, like, you're fighting a boss and you stun them, you put this down, good, very, very good damage. So there you guys go as far as that. Now, on top of that, we are going to be getting this right here, Spiked Armor, which gives you, you know, thorns. Now, it says 250. That's because I'm level 48. As your levels increase, so does the amount of thorns this gives you. You know, you get to 49, it's going to give you more. You get to 50, it's going to give you more, so on and so forth. So, um, this isn't a constant number. It will go up with your level. But uh, this is basically, whenever enemies hit you, they will take damage. Now, this is very good because this also will apply to your skeletons, your golem. They can take the thorns as well. So whenever they're hitting your golem or they're hitting you or whatever, they will be taking damage back based off of the thorns, which is really good. Uh, moving on to this one, increases the damage and life of your skeletal warriors by 45%. This is a no-brainer. You're getting increased damage and you're getting increased life. This is an undead army build, so you want both of those things. Then you will be taking Grim Harvest, consuming a corpse generates six essence. Just another way to get your essence up, and I'll be talking about why a little bit later into the build. Uh, but very, very good. And then right here, you do 9% increased damage uh, for six seconds after consuming a corpse. You are pretty much doing that constantly. Not to mention Miasma is going to be really good because you are basically consuming a corpse but you're pretty much gonna have this up constantly because you're gonna be always consuming corpses very very good addition to the build then once we come down here i want to talk about this decrepify this is going to allow you to slow enemies in a pretty big area for 40 percent and they're going to be doing 20 percent less damage for 12 seconds 
That alone is already ridiculous, especially whenever you slow them, put the Miasma down, now they're getting cooked. You know what I'm saying? They're just sitting in the Miasma taking damage. Then you get this bonus right here. Enemies hit while afflicted by Decrepify have a 10% chance to be stunned. So now, uh, with you auto-attacking constantly, you are going to be stunning enemies. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this also applies to your skeletons. If they're hitting and the enemies are hit with Decrepify. Now, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure this applies to them too. But even without it, you are, you are going to be auto-attacking all the time. So you will be stunning the enemies. Uh, and then right here, enemies hit while afflicted by Decrepify have a 15% chance to reduce your cooldowns. Now you're going to have just your cooldowns reduced. And there's two major cooldowns in this build that you want to have uh, up as much as possible. So this is going to be really, really nice. Uh, on top of that, Skeletal Mage Mastery increases the damage and life of your Skeletal Mages by 60%. Once again, no brainer. You are going to want the increased damage, and you are going to want the increased life. This is something that's pretty obvious, self explanatory. Now we're going to be moving down here, and the main damaging ability for you is Bone Spirit. Now, this is one of the major cooldowns I was talking about. This is the reason why you want to have as much essence as possible, because when you use this, it uses all of your remaining essence. And it will basically a spirit will go out and you can target enemies. If there's no target, it will search, um, you know, for an enemy. And once it reaches the destination, it'll explode doing massive AOE damage. Now, the thing about it is the damage is increased based on the percentage of or well, it's increased by 3% for each point of essence spent casting this 3% per each point. If you have 100 points, that's going to be 300% increased damage, which is ridiculous like that it's actually ridiculous damage then you get this bonus right here if bone spirit critically strikes its cooldowns reduced by six seconds it's on an 11 second cooldown so that takes this cooldown to five seconds plus you're getting the cooldown reduction from um decrepify you can have this up every three four seconds or less it's 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 very good addition and then uh right here bone spirit has additional 10 percent chance to critically strike now you don't know what's so cool about this is uh it's an aoe move let's say you hit five enemies you have five different 10 percent chances for it to proc so if one of them proc it goes down to um you know from from 11 seconds it goes down to five seconds so you can actually decently use this ability over and over non-stop the only the only criteria is you're not going to have maximum essence every single time if you're doing it that way but that's why we have all of those other factors getting you as much essence as possible as fast as possible now i want to also talk about this when you're below 50 percent, you receive 30 percent more healing from all sources which we are using that hemorrhage so that's going to be there um, that's going to be the main thing. It's going to be healing you a lot. It's just going to be keeping you alive so that you can do whatever you need to do. Obviously the main thing, th the main thing that this is going to be useful for is the really strong elites and like the bosses, those, you know, you're going to be able to get the healing in and things like that. Whenever you're under 50%, really, really nice. Now on top of that, you're getting this one right here. Blood orbs also heal your minions by 45% of the amount. So now all your minions are going to be getting healed uh, by your blood orbs on top of you getting healed on the blood orbs. And, that, and you can see why this build is so cohesive and works so well together. But now that we're done talking about all the passives and everything here, let's go ahead and go down here. Now, as far as your ultimates, you're not getting any ultimates. You don't need them. Uh, but we are going to be getting a lot of different passives. And one of those being uh, increase the damage and life of your golem by 75%. Now, once again, it's self-explanatory. Uh, once your golem do more damage and stay alive, there you guys go. Now, we have four passives over here, and we're going to be maxing out all of those also. And that's because after you've been healthy for four seconds, you and your minions gave 12% attack speed. This is something that is um, very good for your minions because they are going to be doing more damage because they're attacking faster. But on top of that, you're going to be doing more damage. You're going to be getting more of the corpse procs. You're going to be getting more of the um, hemorrhage you know, procs and everything like that because you're attacking faster also on top of getting essence back faster. So this just works good with this build on multiple levels. Then you see right here, your minions deal 30% increased damage when you're close to them. You're always close to them because they literally follow you. So this is always going to be active. Always. 100% of the time. Then this one right here, your minions cannot lose more than 30% of their maximum life from a single damage instance. What this means is your minions have to be hit minimum four times to die. Right? 30-30-30 is 90%. That fourth hit is going to be over your, dam your, your HP cap. But the thing about this is you are going to be healing them on top of 
um, not only with the priest, but also with your, you know, your hemorrhage and the blood orbs and everything like that. So they should basically be staying pretty decently healthy for a large part of, you know, anything that you're doing. This is very good because it literally forces any enemy, you know, if you're fighting a boss or an elite or whatever, they hit, you know, do a really strong attack. They cannot one shot your minions. They have to hit them four times. Very, very good addition to the build. Then you see right here. Every five seconds, your skeletal priest healing will heal your skeletons for an additional 60% of the maximum HP. Uh, this is just really good. Uh, if you guys don't know, if you have all of your skeletons alive, if you use a corpse to summon, it will summon a priest that will buff the ally, buff your skeletons and heal them. This is basically just adding on to that every five seconds, they will heal for 60%, which is really, really nice. Now, we're done talking about the ultimates. I wouldn't get into the key passive which is going to be this one right here after you have not taken damage in the last three seconds your minions gain 15 percent attack speed while you have at least seven minions this bonus is double very very good attack speed uh your minions are going to be talking a lot even faster and doing even more damage it's just all all built into each other very very good spread now I do want to say I'm missing three points because I'm level 48, so level 49, 50, or two, and then I'm missing one from the map, so three. Uh, all three of those points are going to be going into your Miasma, so you want your Miasma to be four out of five, so there you guys go as far as that. Now that we're done talking about that, I do want to uh, talk about the skill assignments real quick because two of the skills are not on the skill tree, seeing as they don't level up or anything like that. Your Q, or my Q. Uh, which is going to be the raised skeleton. You do want to have this on a skill tree. Like I said, if you if you raise uh, if you raise a corpse while all of your minions are alive, you will raise the priest, and the priest will give them a damage buff and heal them. You want to make sure you're having this damage buff active as much as possible or at all times if possible. So there you guys go as far as that. Uh, and then the other one is going to be your golem summoning. This is so that you can use his active ability, um, you know, whenever you need to. Now, I'll talk about, you know, which golems and priests and, or not priests, but like skeletons and stuff to use. But you want to make sure you have your hot ball bar something like this. Uh, with this being the case, you don't even have space for an ultimate if you wanted to. So, uh, there you guys go as far as that. But now that we're done talking about that, I do want to talk about the Book of the Dead. Going to the Book of the Dead, talking about the Skeletal Warriors. The best one, in my opinion, uh, you can obviously use whatever preference you want if you want to. Best, in my opinion, is the Defenders. They are going to be tanky, but on top of being tanky, they're still doing damage, which is really, really good. Uh, not to mention, uh, the passive right here, every six seconds, your skeletal defenders negate the next instance of uh, direct damage they would take. So instead of them having to take four hits, now they have to take five hits. And this is every six seconds, they have to take an uh, additional hit uh, where they just don't take damage. And that just makes them even tankier, makes their survivability even better. Uh, just overall very very good in my opinion and then uh, with this one you can give them increased thorns But as you guys see uh, they're already inheriting 30% of your thorns So they're already you know got some thorns in them uh, You you mainly want to keep them alive more so than giving them thorns and then you know letting them die uh, In my opinion, so this is the one I went for I say you go for this But you can go for whatever you want moving on to the skeletal mages I I personally think the cold ones are absolutely insane if you guys like the other two versions, you can go for that for yourself. But the fact that they're chilling enemies and eventually freezing them alone is so good to me. Especially because you're going to be having three to five uh, mages just dishing damage from the back line over and over and over nonstop. Very, very, very good. Uh, on top of that, I went with the bonus of enemies who are frozen by or damaged while frozen by your cold mages primary attack are made vulnerable for four seconds. They're always going to be attacking. So they're always going to be freezing and attacking frozen enemies. So they're going to, you know, enemies are pretty much going to be vulnerable as long as your mages are attacking. And this is going to just make you and everybody else do more damage. Very, very good for the build, my, uh, you know, personally. Then I want to talk about the golem. I've tried out all three golems. I'm going to be honest, and this is preference. I'm not saying it's fact, but I'm going to be honest. I think that the bone golem is the best golem easily, and it's not even close, in my opinion. Now, I know that the Iron Golem got buffed with the Slam and everything like that, but even still, I just find the Bone Golem to be the best one easily, and it fits this build so well. Um, number one, it is super tanky, and the active on the Bone Golem is a taunt, and the taunt is massive. It's not some baby taunt. The taunt is, like, very huge. It's a very big AoE for the, you know, for the Golem to taunt everybody. So, that along with how I'm running, you know, the thorn, the thorns and everything else, and then the mages in the back and stuff, um, 
I think that this is just the best choice for this build. You guys can pick whatever you want. And then I go with this. Your Golem gains 10% increased maximum life, making him tankier. And then on top of that, instead of, you know, taking 30% of the thorns, he now has 50%. So he's going to be even dishing out more damage for, um, to the enemies with my thorns uh, than he would have been. But now that we're talking about uh, Bone of the Dead, there you guys go as far as all of that. I do want to talk about the aspects so that you guys can know exactly what to look for and everything like that when it comes to making this build. As you guys see right here, I am on my D4 Builder. Uh, and that's because I don't have all of the aspects that I want to show you guys. But I still want to show you them just so you can look out for them. Or if you can go get them, you guys can go get them as well. Uh, the first one is going to be Aspect of Hardened Bones. While you have 7 or more minions, your minions gain 15-20% to 20 increased damage reduction. Which you should have all your minions up. At, at once which would be seven so you should be basically having this propped most of the time and this is going to give them even more survivability very very good moving on to the next one your maximum number of skeletal mages is increased by two uh, this is going to bring your skeletal mages from three to five and I actually have this on my character right now This is going to give you insane amount of damage very very good for the build you can't get this uh, you can't go out and get this from a dungeon. This just has to be a drop. So look out for that whenever you look, you know, looking at legendary gear. Then you move on to this one. Your maximum number of skeletal warriors is increased by two. This is also this is going to bring your skeletal warriors from four to six, which this is very good as well. Just making your undead skeletal army even stronger. Uh, this is also something you can't go out and get. You have to just get it as a drop. I have not had this drop for me yet, so that's unfortunate. But, uh, yeah, there you guys go. Then, another one. Every 10 seconds, your cold skeletal mages cast a blizzard that deals X amount of cold damage and continuously chills enemies for 8% over 6 seconds. This is... Ma basically gives like your 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 mages a, a ultimate ability or special ability that they you know cast every 10 seconds which is just going to be adding even more to the build on top of everything else uh moving on to this one your skeletons gain increased damage while alive up to 20 to 30 percent after 10 seconds uh none of your skeletons should be dying instantly or anything like that they all should be alive for over 10 seconds so this damage bonus should pretty much be up uh, all the time uh, as you guys see right there unlocked by completing alderwood and scogs glen so if you guys need to go get this it says it right there uh, another one each time one of your summoning minions damages an enemy they gain 10 to 14 percent attack speed for three seconds up to 30 to 42 percent this one is also insane because they're always damaging enemies so this is just going to be a big increase to the build also and then this one right here your golem has a 1 to 4% chance to reduce its active cooldowns by 2 seconds and a 0.5 to 2% chance to spawn a corpse each time it damages an enemy with its normal attack. It should be normal attacking all the time. So even though this is a very small percentage, it's going to proc eventually. And, you know, whenever those times it does proc, it'll be nice. And it's just a, you know, decent addition to the build. So there are a bunch of different aspects you guys can look out for and go for or whatever. It is up to you. But I want to show you some of the ones that I'm looking for and that I am going to be using with this build to make the build that much better. So now that we're done talking about all that, I do want to show you guys the combo, and then I want to show you guys a little bit of gameplay so you can see exactly how it works uh, with itself. Now, for the combo, what you want to do is you want to call your golem to the enemies, and while doing that, you will drop a Decrepify. Now, all you need is one auto attack to have max essence again, so you can do that right after the Decrepify. After you do that, right, so you'll, so like I said, you'll call the golem, Decrepify, and that is going to taunt all the enemies, slow them, damage reduction, everything. He's going to be fighting them. Now, after that, you want to send your Bone Spirit in to basically AoE all the enemies. And all the mobs and small fry are going to die. Now, after all the you know, mobs and small fry die, only the stronger enemies or, you know, elites or boss or whatever are going to remain. After that happens, you number one, you want to use your Corpse Explosion. So that you can create a miasma right in the middle of them. And then you also want to use your summon so that you can buff all of your skeletons so they're dishing out even more damage. That is the combo. And then after that, obviously, you just, you know, do what you need to do uh, as you see fit. So now that we got the combo out of the way, I want to go ahead and show you guys so you guys can see exactly how it all looks and everything like that. It's a pretty safe build. Uh, as, like I said, I did World Tier 3 uh, capstone with this. Uh, I fought bosses with this and everything like that. And bosses cannot be uh, taunted, but 
your minions and golem will still body block your bo the boss from getting to you so like even if the boss can't be taunted he still has to fight them before he gets to you so it's really good for fighting you know large waves of enemies or fighting bosses or whatever the case may be uh now i'm not going to do the combo here because i don't need to we're just going to go ahead and kill them pretty easy right here but now that we get over here i'm going to go ahead and show you guys the combo so like i said you'll come over here taunt the crepify auto attack you can use your bone and then miasma you're gonna buff your uh skeletons and then you will just rinse repeat if you need to taunt again you can rinse repeat and like i said it's gonna be a pretty safe build uh everybody's gonna be pretty healthy uh nothing pretty crazy is gonna go on i'm gonna go ahead and fight another way for you guys um and then after that uh, I'll show you guys like an elite so you see it kind of what you know what's going on and the really cool thing about this build is you can actually uh, Go and grab the uh, aggro of all the enemies if you want and then after that you can basically just taunt them all And then you can you know go about your business as you guys see I will come over here and grab the attention of these enemies right here, and then I'll taunt them all Decrepify Use the bone thing right there and then, uh, I mean, there's really no reason to have to use Miasma. They're all kind of small enemies. But as you guys see, you can just pray, you can play pretty safe with this build because all of your, mo your, you know, your skeletons and everything are tanking for you. But even whenever you get to the elites, like I said, there's going to be uh, one right here. You can literally taunt him, decrepify, and you can literally sit back and play super safe. Decrepify again whenever you need to. You can taunt again if you need to. Bone Spirit whenever you need to. Very, very easy way to go about using this build. Like I said, uh, it's pretty safe. I've enjoyed it so much. If you guys like to play like this, you can. If you guys don't like to play like this, I will be having a bunch of different builds and stuff coming out. So make sure you guys stay tuned for all of that. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Be sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Comment down below. Tell me what you guys think in the comments section. With that being said, I will see you guys next time. Peace.